Hi, I'm Frank. Today I'm going to be reviewing the launch Sea Reader 2.0 Elite Diagnostic Scanner. Now, if you've seen my videos, you'll know that I find diagnostic scanners to be an invaluable tool to diagnose problems and to ensure that uh, my car is in tip top condition uh, while I'm driving. Now, a good diagnostic scanner is like I said, essential. I would recommend it to anybody that does any type of automotive work uh, on their own. There are a number of automotive scanners on the market. The uh, three common ones for uh, DIY and professionals are Launch, Foxwell, and uh, Autel. All three of them make excellent scanners, and uh, I've used all three. The, uh, this particular launch sets itself apart in one amazing way. Now, and that is its cost. You're looking at $215 for a full function diagnostic scanner that's bi-directional with special features. Now, to get that same thing in uh, most other scanners, you're going to be looking at seven, eight hundred, maybe even a thousand dollars for it. So you have something that's about 25% the cost that is going to do the same thing. Now, the disadvantage of this uh, is that, or the trade-off, I should say, is that it's specific for Mercedes-Benz in terms of special functions and uh, uh, the bi-directional scanning. The OBD2 reader will work on any car with an OBD um, port, but the special functions will only work with Mercedes-Benz. Now they also make it for Honda and I believe Toyota. Uh, you can see in the uh, link I provide. But the, uh, the trade-off for having only one specific vehicle is the cost. If you have a Mercedes and you just use that car, you don't have any other cars, you're working on it yourself, then this is the most practical uh, diagnostic scanner you can get. You can't beat the cost and it'll do everything the more expensive scanners, even from launch, will do. So let's take a look at it. So let's go ahead and unbox the uh, launch diagnostic scanner for uh, Mercedes-Benz. So what we have is the reader and the uh, diagnostic cable. One of the things that I don't see that uh, I wish it had, uh, it's not a big issue because pretty much everybody with smartphones now has one, is a, um, a USB-C um, connector for uh, charging. So I didn't see that anywhere in the, uh, in the box. We have the uh, cable to connect, the scanner, and a box. So that's one thing that I found that is, uh, is missing. But uh, like I said, I don't think that's a big issue because everybody has the uh, plugs anyway. So I have a pair of Sony headphones. I just took the plug. It's a standard USB-C plug. Um, plugged it in and now I can charge the uh, device. Power on is um, this button here. It comes partially charged anyway. Let's go ahead and get this cover off. All right, now we have our start menu. Everything's touch screen, so I'll do start, English. Lots of different languages, so um, that's a good thing. And it has America, New York, so uh, that's what I'll select since um, I am in the U.S. And then it's going to ask you to connect to a Wi-Fi network. This is so you can get your uh, updates. You'll get updates for free. So I'm going to connect to that and just click the upgrade. Um, 
because what that's going to do is just get you all up to the latest um, latest updates. So I have pretty much everything selected and update. So now it'll go ahead and download uh, everything and um, install it so that my device is up to date. Any updates that this has, uh, you can just go in there and click update and it'll update to uh, the latest um, version of the operating system as well as any uh, changes that you may have with um, addition of new model years, uh, that sort of thing. This does uh, come with lifetime uh, updates for free, which uh, a lot of companies do not. They'll give you like three years or five years or one year. Uh, this is lifetime updates. Uh, it's a very nice, nicely built unit. I, I like it. It's a good size. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, uh, full function units, including made by launch, can have larger screens but you're going to be paying more for it as well. And this is uh, just a really good size, I think, for um, and, and good functionality for what you get. The serial port in, you're going to connect to the unit. This pretty much connects just like any um, anything on a computer. And then the other end will go into the diagnostic port on your vehicle. So let's go ahead and do that. On the Mercedes, you're going to find the diagnostic port. Here's um, my steering column, uh, light switch, parking brake. Come on down underneath. This is on the driver's side. And there's a little tab right here that you'll pull down. And that's the diagnostic port, the OBD2 port. And when I plug it in, we're going to be ready to um, go ahead here and try this out. I'm going to turn the ignition on. So you can go ahead and first check your settings. You have metric or imperial. Uh, I changed it to Imperial because I'm in the U.S. and we always have those crazy measurements. Uh, automatic detection on Connect, I have that selected on. And then you can go ahead and select any of the other uh, functions that you may want to uh, do. Back in here is your reset or return button. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Diagnose. There's Diagnose and then the OBD2. So I'm going to start with the Diagnose. Now, I can select either of these things, a Demo Mode, Maybach, Mercedes, or Sprinter, or Auto Detect. And up at the top, you'll notice there's American, European, Asian, or Chinese versions. But I'm just going to go ahead and click the uh, Auto Detect. And what it does is it's going to scan my VIN number, and from the VIN number, it's going to tell me what car I actually have, uh, the model and where it's at. So Mercedes-Benz, start detection, yes. Now it's going to start loading. And from here, it will start a diagnosis of uh, the complete system. Now right up along here is the percent of progress. This is tell you what it's checking at the time. There may be some things you have that are not installed. Distronic, my car does not have it, so it says not equipped. Uh, and then it'll tell you any fault codes that may be. Uh, this takes not a great deal of time. This actually is a lot faster than um, some of the other scanners that I've seen. I really like the speed with which this goes through the, um, uh, the systems. All right, we're coming down to the end, 97, 98, 99, and 100%. Now it'll generate a report. That report will give us 
much everything you need. I'm going to look over here and it gives different the different modules. Mine all say normal. If there was a fault, it would tell you that there's a fault code there and then you can open it up and see what the fault code is and make uh, whatever changes. Uh, if you want to share the information, you can print it or send it by email. And if there were any codes to clear, I can clear the codes here, print the report. I don't have any codes. So yes, I want to end my session. Now let's check out the OBD2 function. This OBD2 will not only work for the Mercedes, but the OBD will work for um, any OBD2 car. So you're not limited to just this car. So now we can do all protocol scans. And we'll go ahead and let it run through uh, all of these protocols. And notice there are a number of different protocols for OBD2 scanners. And uh, it shows, it's running through to see which one is compatible. You can see that it's matched this uh, ISO CAN bus protocol and the rest of these are failing because this is what we have um, on the Mercedes. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see that I had a problem with my electronic parking brake. And I used my OBD2 scanner to diagnose which of the parking brakes, electronic parking brakes, was the one that was bad. I'm going to show you how to do it on this one. We're going to select Diagnose. And then instead of Auto Detect, I'm going to select Mercedes. OK. I'm going to automatically search, so it's just going to check for what the uh, read from the uh, VIN number, which is correct. And now we're going to do system select, electronic parking brake. Now read data stream, actuator motors. Um, let me go back here for a minute. And we're going to do an actuation, actuation test for the electronic parking brake. And from here you can see left and right. So I'm going to come over here to where my parking brake is. And now it shows that they're closed and released. So now they're both open. I'm going to push it again. Actuate it and closed. So both my left and right are working properly. And that's a, a lot easier way to tell. Now, where I was at before on reading the data stream, actuator motors, um, power consumption of left, power consumption of right, and here I have the values. I'll go ahead and and you can see the, the uh, amperage changes. So that tells me that both of them are working properly. Um, this is how I determined before by looking at the uh, voltage and amperage of the uh, units. This um, uh, actuation test actuation test is um, really a lot easier than uh, my other unit because it just tells me now they're both open actuated and closed so that's a nice uh, nice feature now when you change your um, brake pads you need to move the uh, parking brakes into position for that and with this, vehicle must be a standstill, prevent roll away, release parking brake, um, actuator valves status to open. I'm going to do that now. It's 
So F3, move assembly to position. And now I can hear the, um, hear the motors moving to um, undo the, uh, the brake. And you can see now my park is uh, flashing. So I'm in position to change my brake pads. I'm going to go to F4 to now close the assembly. That would be after I'm done um, with the uh, brake pad change. So this is a nice easy way. Otherwise there's a lot of things you have to go through in the menu of the car to get it set to the proper place. And I'm going to go ahead and set my parking brake. So now it has uh, the closed position. So in terms of being able to do, uh, do your brakes, this is just a really nice, easy way of doing it. And for the parking brake actuator, it's uh, a nice, easy way to diagnose when something's wrong and whether it's the left or the right. Now I'm going to disconnect this wire from the um, uh, evaporative uh, control system, start the car up and let it give me a, um, a, an air, a, a, a check engine light warning code. And we'll see how well the uh, launch diagnoses that. So I've run the diagnostic test and you can see the engine control module. The purge valve of the evaporative emission control system has an open circuit. So it's detected that I uh, disconnected that wire and tells me exactly what the problem is. Now it also has an electronic parking brake fault because of what we were just playing with with the uh, parking brake during that time it threw, a, uh, threw an error code. So now I'm going to plug, uh, plug it back in. Now that that's plugged in, I'm going to clear the code. And it's going ahead now clearing all of my uh, uh, engine codes and parking brake code. All in all, I think that the uh, launch is a great little scanner. Uh, I, I like it a lot. It does everything that, um, uh, that my more expensive scanner does. Uh, I also have an Aston Martin, so it won't work on that, but it works perfectly on the Mercedes. I have two Mercedes, and uh, it works great on both of them. It does everything that I want, and, uh, and more. The, uh, the size I really like, um, because it's, it's nice and compact. This is small enough that I can put in the back of the vehicle and keep it with me, uh, or keep it in the car at all times. If I'm out on a trip or a longer trip and something happens, um, it drives me nuts not knowing what's, uh, what's happening with the car. With something that's, uh, that's this size and this powerful, I can pull it out, plug it in, and uh, get a good idea of what's wrong with the car and whether I can continue on my trip without any difficulties or whether I need to stop and do something about it. Uh, all in all, I give this a, a, a thumbs up and, and recommend it. I would uh, I'll provide a link below where you can uh, order this and um, make, your, uh, make your life a lot easier for uh, uh, DIY on your Mercedes.